for pitching stocks, what types of companies would be the ideal ones to pick? Characteristics, et cetera. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think it's that black. I don't think it's that like black and white, right? It's like, what type of companies would be the ideal ones to pick? I mean, if you're pitching a stock, you will want to pick a stock that's that you believe is undervalued, right? And so, you know, a lot of that comes back to kind of what we just talked about, which is uh, valuation, right? But you know, it could, it could, you, you could find a good stock in any industry, really. I mean, some industries probably easier to do than others, right? Because some industries have more favorable tailwinds and just kind of macro level trends, whereas some industries might be not as favorable, right? Like if you say um, brick and mortar retail, like probably harder to find a good stock in brick and mortar retail because you see all the JC pennies and uh, I don't know, Radio Shack and Best Buys of the world, they're going out of business, right? Why are they going out of business? Because everything's moving online. It's e-commerce, everyone's shopping on the internet and they have this bloated cost structure with, they have to pay rent for these huge, you know, storefronts and whatever. And their competitors that just sell stuff online don't need to pay for any of that, right? And so like, that probably would be, I'm not saying there are no good physical brick and mortar retailers to invest in, but that would probably be harder to invest in a industry like that versus say, I don't know, technology, right? Like my favorite industry to invest in is technology. I think technology has been the, also been the best performing industry from like a return standpoint, right? And there's a lot of reasons for why that might be the case. But like even during COVID, when a lot of stocks got crushed, um, a lot of technology stocks actually did great. Right? Like, oh, everyone's working from home and actually they need to use even more technology, right? And so like, so I would say the first thing I would look at is probably industry. Like what industry is it in? I'm not saying technology is the only industry, but like you want to pick a, a market or like an industry where like the environment is favorable, right? Then once you have the industry, then within that industry, obviously there's a lot of different companies so you still need to kind of look at companies on like an individual level and, and that's the hard part, right? Um, and so for companies like, I mean, you just wanna pick companies that are, um, you know, misunderstood usually, right? Meaning, hey, maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe the stock is really low right now for a certain company because, um, the, mar the market is pricing in a certain risk that they're worried about. But in reality, you know, that risk is, is not really like that big of a deal, right? And you have like a contrarian opinion to what the rest of the market thinks, right? Um, then your argument for pitching that stock would basically be, you have to justify why that's not that big of a risk, right? Um, what else? I mean, like, otherwise it's just like, Hey, maybe, you know, there's like, typically, um, you want a company that is growing quickly. Right. Cause I think the market in general favors high growth. Like, like really the two, if I really dumb it down, when you think about like valuing a stock, you can look at it along two different axes. It's like growth and then there's like margins, right? How quickly is the company growing and then how profitable is it? For every, how quickly is the company growing means how quickly is the revenue growing, the top line, right? And then margins is like for every, okay, that's great, you're growing, but for every incremental dollar that you're bringing in, how many cents do you get to keep, right? The more, the higher your margins, the more of that money you're actually keeping right? Because your expenses are lower. And so typically those two things kind of are trade-offs, right? Like you can always spend more money and grow faster, right? But if you spend more money, that means your expenses are higher and your margins are going to be lower. So a lot of high growth companies in the beginning, they're unprofitable until they reach certain economies of scale and then their costs are going down and whatever. But like, if you can find a company that's 
high growth and um, high margins, then those are usually, you know, best in class, right? Or maybe you find a company that's growing really fast right now and they're not profitable yet. And then you argue that um, eventually they will be very profitable because, you know, whatever, right? Like right now they're not profitable. I I'm making this up by the way. Right now they're not profitable because they're investing in growth because the nature of the market that they're in is that it's a winner takes all market. Meaning whoever can like grab the most customers first and kind of become that 800 pound gorilla in the space, they're going to become essentially the monopoly, right? And once they become the monopoly, then they have all the pricing power and competitors aren't gonna be able to take them over. Like, you know, like Google, <laughs> like Google is like essentially almost a monopoly. Like, yeah, there are other search engines, but most people just use Google, right? So like, you, you might argue that, hey, even though right now it's unprofitable, but it's growing the fastest, it'll eventually be the market leader. And once it does, then you don't have to worry about margins because the margins will come, right? Um, I mean, other characteristics you might look for. I mean, so growth, we talked about growth, we talked about margins. Um, if there's like some unique competitive advantage, you know, like at the product level or just in terms of their business model that makes it, um, differentiated from their competitors, right? I mean, competitive advantage could be a lot of things. It could be, I don't know, network effect or um, like Amazon. Let's just say Amazon, right? Like they have a network effect because guess what? They have like everybody that goes online, if they want to buy something, one of the first places they go to is Amazon. So they have all the buyers, they have all the consumers, right? Well, if they have all the consumers and that's where everyone goes to shop, and guess where all the all the e-commerce businesses are going to go? They're going to go on Amazon and sell on Amazon, right? And now they have like both sides of the marketplace. They have a lot. They have all the sellers and they have all the buyers. So who's going to come out and compete with Amazon on the e-commerce side? I mean, a lot of people tried, but no one's really been able to beat them, right? Like Walmart may, might be the closest thing, but Walmart's a huge business too, right? Which is why they have the deep pockets. There. So like that could be a competitive advantage, right? Or it could be... Um, what else? Like um, maybe just like the sheer scale of the business, which allows them to compete on price. But I like Amazon, they have another part of the business, Amazon Web Services, which is like the cloud, um, the cloud computing uh, business. And for Amazon Web Services, what they do is actually they cut their prices like every single year. They just keep cutting prices lower and lower and lower. And they can do that and still be very profitable but their smaller competitors can't do that. And so by doing that, they basically just crush all their competition. And you might say like in the long run, like they're gonna be the last man standing, right? Like, so I'm gonna give you a lot of examples here. Like this is not like, I can't give you like an exact stock to pitch to say, hey, pitch this stock or all of you should pitch this one stock and that's the right answer. But I'm just teaching you how to think about this. And then like, if you go in the behavior module, we have, this is one of the questions in the behavior module or in the behavioral questionnaire. Right. We have like the question on pitch me a stock. And then we included a framework on how to answer that question. And like, what are the points to hit on? And it's kind of a lot of the same things I talked about. Like usually we like to give three reasons and usually like, I want the first reason to be like a more macro level reason. Um, and I want the second reason to be like more micro level, which means that it's at the company level. Something I like about the company qualitatively speaking. And then like, ideally the third point, if you can, um, I like to make it like a quantitative reason or like more of like valuation based or, you know, cite some numbers about their, their growth rates, their margins, their valuation multiples, why I think they're undervalued. Like if you're going to pitch a stock, you kind of have to say it's undervalued. Like it's going to be worth more in the future. Right. So those are usually like the three elements that we have. Right. So I will, I will look at that, Tony. Um, and uh, that's pretty much that. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're looking for more customized advice that's tailored for your specific situation, then I invite you to book a free strategy session with our team at the link below. We'll talk to you soon.